How's it going, folks? I'm Mark. Howdy, I'm Lottie. Welcome to Like Minded Lunatics. We're going to do a Friday night reaction video. <clears throat> and Lottie, uh, it is Pride Month. It is Pride Month. Is it? Is it, Mark? For Austin. For Austin. For Austin, because we have to do things different. Uh, we don't know why, but there's Pride in August. And that's when we're celebrating that's when we're our Pride. Celebrating. Because I forgot. I forgot in June because the August thing throws me off. So uh, I thought we would take a look at an artist that I had read about, an up-and-coming LGBT artist that was in several articles I read about kind of like artists to watch for type thing. Really? Yeah. So this uh, this young woman is Joy Aladakun. Um, she's really young. I think she was born in like 93 or 92, something like that. Um, why? Wow. She is young. I know, I know. Just a baby. Uh, just a baby. Uh, but apparently a phenomenal artist. And so I'm excited about this. I think she grew up in a fairly strict religious home, Ugh. and a lot of her music kind of um, tries to come to terms with her spiritual spirituality versus like how she kind of grew up. Who she is. Yeah, who she is. So I'm excited to see this one. Have you heard of her? I've, I've never heard her. I've never heard this song. I've never said, this is nice. And you're, you're exposed. Well, you've always exposed me to a whole lot of music. That's you're true. I had to expose game. him to Van Halen, which makes zero sense to me as a man who was alive in the 80s. I do you not know... Uh, but yeah, uh, so I'm excited to see this one. Apparently, see it's uh, it's gotten a lot of views on YouTube, and she's uh, she's making some waves. Oh, so uh, this comes from two, 2019 is when this video came out. Uh, the title of the track is Sunday. You ready? Yep. All right, let's do let's it. Go. I kept telling myself, no, don't do this, you can't do this, you have a job, you're going to lose your job. All the guilt and shame, it just had built up to a place where I couldn't, and I didn't want it anymore. This is either going to go down a path where I have this secret relationship and we're hiding, or we could just bring it on to the open right away. I, I know people hate when I stop immediately. But I was, I, I'm sure you were too, I was worried that that conversation was going to go much different. You know, the choice at the end was we can continue to hide it or we could bring it out in the open. The way they were talking, I thought it was a much darker conversation. Yeah, I can see that. I'm so happy it wasn't. It did, that it wasn't, yes, I'm glad too. <laughs> Jeez. Says I'm up to no good again. Couldn't make it proud though I did my best. I feel like a mess. I feel like I'm stuck in the wrong skin. I feel like I'm sick, but I'm having trouble swallowing my medicine. Sunday. Carry me, carry me down to the water, wash me clean. I'm still struggling. Sunday, bury me under the weight of who you need me to be. Can't you see? I'm struggling. I'll stop it here. Where are you at so far? I think this is really. I think this is what a lot of uh, gay people who are brought up in religious families have to go through mm. because Christianity, Christi I'm, I'm going to speak specifically Christianity, it makes no sense because Christian. I mean, they don't like anything. Right. I mean, if Christian, if they were honest with what they believe, they would be stoning divorced people, uh, people who are who are living together, people who are divorced and remarried. They'd be killing a whole mess of people. But the only people they want to go after are, are LGBT people, and and this she's being held down by the weight of what they're putting her. They want her to be this thing, but it's not her. Yeah, and they won't let her not be herself. Yes. And that's a, it, it, it's, it hurts because you, I, I know what she's, I, I understand this feeling because there's, there's nothing you can do when who you are is not enough for people. Right. And it never will be. There's nothing you can do to change that. The only thing you can do is change yourself 
but you can't necessarily always do that either right. because it's a lot to wear other people's disappointment. Yeah. Wear other people's disappointment. Man, that's a heavy line. And I really like the music part of this as well. I, I, I feel like the moment we started hearing it, Ricky would be fascinated by it. Really? Because we've got the digital, like the digital music, but then you also just have traditional piano. And I like the mixture of that. Yeah. I do like the mixture of that old and new sound. I think it really does create an atmosphere that almost feels cinematic to me. And I think the, the, the imagery kind of supports it too. This, it all feels very cinematic. Like if you told me this was a performance art piece, I would not question it all. I'd be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. This is like a visual, uh, a visual ar ar oral argument of some kind. But you know, that's what it feels like. Yeah, I can see that. I keep God locked in a picture frame, so I feel a little better by my number day. Yeah, I confess, the questions and the answers seem to sound the same I'm just like the rest, standing tall pretending not to be afraid Son, What an image that is be afraid. Having to kiss through a fence Yeah What an image that is Sunday Carry me, carry me down to the water Watch me clean, I'm still struggling Sunday, bury me under the weight of who you need me to be Can't you see, I'm struggling Sunday, come around, lift me up again Never too proud for a helping hand I've been feeling down Can you hear me now? Sunday come around, lift me up again I'm never too proud for a helping hand I've been feeling down Can you hear me now? Sunday, carry me, carry me down to the water Watch me clean, I'm still struggling That is so beautiful. Yeah. It, I, I'm just going to tell you this. Go ahead. Uh, when I was growing up, I was, I, was, I was raised Catholic, and I was pretty Catholic. I mean, I taught Sunday school, and I believed, but I don't believe the way that, I believed the way I assumed people had believed, because all my cousins, not all my cousins, 95% of my cousins got married because they have to. Sure. Okay. So, and no one cared about that. No. Uh, half of my cousins that had gotten married were divorced. No one cared about that. So I assumed that no one would care about a gay kid. They cared a lot. Yeah. <laughs> they cared a lot. But uh, at the time, uh, my best friend was a person named Damien. Okay. And we were great friends. And I was gay. Damien was very straight, but he was also uh, very uh, Catholic as well. And we never talked about the fact that I was gay, but he knew, and it started to weigh on him. And it started to weigh on him so much that he had to go talk to the Monsignor of, this, of the church that we went to, who then told me that I couldn't come back unless I decided that I was ashamed of being gay. And 
I did not know what to do because I was part of their youth group. I was part of their adult group. I taught. So I, everyone I knew was there. So I went to church this Sunday and I was there and he looked at me and he did that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah thing. And he and he looked right at me and I said, I, I don't know what to do, but I'm not going to. This doesn't feel right. So, so I stood up and I walked down the middle of the church and just turned around and waved goodbye at him and left. But I never heard from 30 people, all these people I knew, I never heard from a single one of them ever again. And how old? 23. Wow. So, so everything she says, it, it, it's true. It feels true because yeah. there's nothing you can't. They can never heal you because they won't forgive you because they're, they don't understand that you don't need to be forgiven for something. Right. So th they can never get around that side. So it's you who has to decide how much you're going to let them weigh you down, which is wonderful that she didn't. Yeah. I just, I love this song. <laughs> it was beautiful. I, 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 it was the whole, the video was beautiful. I liked the whole the whole thing because you see all these heart-wrenching images and then you see these people reaching out anyway. And that's really, sadly, that's still what people have to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's one of those things where for somebody like me, trying to figure out how to be an ally, does that make sense? Because yeah. I, I, you know, I see well, the words at the beginning. You could remember what pride is. That would help. <laughs> Ahead, that I'm would sorry. help, I'm sorry. wouldn't it? I didn't, I didn't You'd mean, think I'm a sorry. real ally would know which month it was, idiot. But you read the words there at the beginning and the end, and, you know, it's obvious that if there were more allies, people wouldn't be so bold about passing judgment. I think that's true. And if there were more allies in all walks of life, and I know we've talked about it before, but I remember hearing an interview with Mick Foley, who's Mankind in WWE. And Mick was talking about his work with Rain. Rain is an organization that helps women in battered shelters and stuff like that. And Mick had been doing all these talks and stuff and, you know, like fun fundraising. He was on one of their boards and things like that. And he was doing this interview and they they asked him, like, Mick, why, you know, why did you get involved in this, this thing? Just kind of getting history on it and stuff. And he's like, well, you know, it's something I'm really passionate about. You know, a lot of people really need help. And uh, I think what a lot of folks don't realize is that um, uh, folks who like the things that I'm involved in would never understand any of this if I didn't do this. And so if I, if I didn't bring it to that audience, if I didn't bring it to my fans, do you think they would ever know anything about this organization? No. So, you know, my hope is that they look up and they see, oh, there's mankind. What is he doing? Oh, he's helping these, you know, this battered women shelter. Yeah. And I always try to keep that in mind because I feel like that the more voices from varied places stand up and say, you know what? Enough of that shit. Leave my friends the fuck alone. You know? Yeah. No, I feel like I if more voices were m more adamant because in a letter from a Birmingham jail, Martin Luther King Jr. writes about, you know, the greatest impediment to racial equality equality or moderate whites the people, good people who will do nothing yeah the path to hell is is not paved with uh, it's is paved with apathy they don't care and that's what i feel and i read these lines and i think that that's my friend that's my student and you know it's just uh goodness and i wonder because i don't i don't think that they don't care i think people i think people can be afraid to care? Yeah. Because I think, I, I, I have always thought that in that moment, if they had to do something because someone was going to be hurt, I, I hope in my heart that people would do the right thing. But it shouldn't, you, you shouldn't have to wait till that moment. Right. When you could do it now. Yes. You could just tell the person in the grocery store, don't talk to her that way. Right. Don't make fun of the guy behind the cashier. So what if he's trans? Don't make fun of them. Who right. cares? You could just do it then. Just do it. Take that stand. Ugh. That way they don't have to worry about that first kiss, what it means. Yes. It means you're getting your first kiss and nothing else. <laughs> that's what it means. You get your first kiss. And that's a nice and thing. And that's a nice thing. 
Well, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Lottie, did you enjoy this God, one? You made me sad again. I thought we ended on a good note. <laughs> it did, but it, Other than it me was too good. Pride and it being was an too idiot. good. It made me happy sad at the same time. <laughs> folks, hopefully we made you happy sad. <laughs> Let us know in the comments what you think, and take care of yourselves, folks. Adios. Bye.